was live. But... Okay, take okay. three. Third time's a charm, right? Yes. You think this will work this time? We're going to try it. Okay. Well, let's see what everybody we'll see. says. Let's see if people can hear us. Can you hear me now? Yeah. <laughs> Isn't right. that an ad? Yeah. <laughs> can you hear me now? Is it for a phone company? Yeah. <laughs> can you hear me now? Can you hear me now? <laughs> okay. Maybe what? it's working. It's right. good. Yay. There we go. All right. Hey, everybody. We had, um, we had a bad storm here. So I'm going to blame it on that. We had a really, really bad storm here this morning and just up until we, we got started. And so a lot of lightning and messed with everything. That's not that's, really the full truth, but that, we'll take it. Yeah, that's yeah. her story. <laughs> it, that's a good one, isn't it? We really, we can, we're going to blame it on that. So here we are at Farmhouse Fabrics. This is third time's the charm, right? Yes. And um, with Abby her coming. You're welcome. And she brought Thanks lots of beautiful, wonderful things. And, and we've been having a good time talking while we're getting everything back. We're almost work. finished. I don't know where you are. We're, but we're starting again. I did get some feedback from the last time I was here because I kept mentioning stabilizers, stabilizers, but um, we kept getting involved in other techniques and I never did get to talk about it. So I got a few letters. So I kind of promised that I would talk about stabilizers a little bit. So here we are. And the very first thing that I wanted to talk about was um, making flowers in the hoop because they don't require any stabilizer at all. What better place to start than no stabilizer at all, right? So, and so Sally Farmhouse Fabrics has amazing stock of silk organza in lots of colors and some prints, some embroidered stuff. Mm -hmm. It's really pretty. So when you're making silk flowers in the hoop, you're just using two layers of silk organza for most part. Now, Sally was asking me in our trial run that number two or one and a half, <laughs> yeah. um, what, what did you ask me? Oh, do I use polyester organza? Can't believe she asked me that. <laughs> no, I don't. And she's reason, a purist. I am. And the reason why is because polyester is an oil product, petroleum product. So it's slick. The fibers are slick and they unravel. So when you have a polyester fabric and you put this little tiny edge on it, like you see on our little flowers it really here, really is tiny. They oh unravel. Goodness. And that's not good. So for instance, are we can we pull it this way? This shawl here, let's talk about this because this yeah, is an this, oldie but goodie. This is amazing. So my mother knit that. Isn't that fun? But this is the second shawl. The very first shawl that she made had all these flowers on it too. The I same, like how we the don't say anything because it sounds so rude. We've seen it. We know we're so excited, but we have said this three times. We love yeah. that shawl. It's how we fun? really feel. But now it. we're like, oh yeah. I wear this all the time. I love this thing. But the, um, the very first shawl, because I hand sewed all these flowers onto this shawl after I made all the flowers and I wasn't going to on sew them. So I just washed the shawl and the flowers together. Now I know that silk organza will wash. Don't put it in the dryer, but yes, you can wash it perfectly fine. Gentle, cool, mild. Remember those things. All right. So the shawl wore out. Actually, I washed it to death. So my <laughs> mom made a new one and I took the flowers off. And so I'm on this one. So this is second life for the flowers. That's how strong silk organza oh is. Oh my goodness. The shawl Same, out. same right. flowers, same flowers. Same flowers. This is one of the, Look some of the this. first blooms that I ever made in design and, and machine. And so embroidery. pretty on her, but it would have driven her nuts to be happy. Yeah. <laughs> She's like, I don't want that around my arms. <laughs> no, I couldn't do it. So we, we, we're going with just little pansies today. But Look at the, how pretty that is. Fun. And so did you, I know you did. You dyed this. Silk organza, right? Yeah. To get all these shades. I did. Yeah. But look how well that held up. I know. The writ dye too. Wow. So writ so. dye. Mm -hmm. And um then because I'm so fascinated with these pansies. <laughs> let's see if we can get I, I said, Well, what did you do? Go in here and hand paint this this little center. <laughs> it's like that's part of the of that's the part design. of the embroidery design. So these, the design this for this how. flower is available so, for purchase on your website. Yes. Is that right? Those are spring blooms. Okay. I know stitch. that one. Okay. So mm -hmm. this is how it is. So this is hoop. Now silk organza is its own stabilizer. So two layers of silk organza together. And if you want the back to be as pretty as the front, you use the same color and type for um, 
for the bobbin as you do the top. Now you will notice that I cheated. I just used bobbin thread for the inside part, it's simply because I'm lazy. But oh, I did use nobody it for the sees other. The, nobody sees nobody the back. Nobody sees the back. Right. Unless you're going to fly with them. <laughs> I'm no on you, Sally. We might better <laughs> make all. Our... <laughs> She's so energetic. <laughs> Like, so I'm going to be showing you the back and the front. That's right. So this is um, this is what it looks that. like in the hoop. And then you cut them out. So then you have all these pieces and they look like this. So I'm going to show it to you my way up. All right. So then you have these pieces and then you put them together. Like we've got threads. Imagine that. <laughs> threads and threads. Okay. So then you put them together like that. So these two overlap and then this overlaps. And then I'll Aww. sew my three little beads <clears throat> right in there like that. Mm -hmm. And sew the leaf on the back. And ta-da! So is that leaf one, one piece? It is one piece. It looks like three. Look at that. Yeah, but and it's that's perfect for, for here. And what's so really nice about this is that you can just take one piece of fabric, big piece, mm -hmm. double layer, and just keep rehooping and rehooping until you've covered up your whole thing. Nice. So in a quarter of a yard or a fat quarter you can make two or three or four i believe pansy flowers let's see if we can get a whole bunch of them and we Oops. have and sometimes i add beads oh i, I do love beads this. and then sometimes i add charms and Aww. charms and so these are all made in hoop like that and then angelina fibers whatever pretty I have going on. This looks like a silk velvet. That's silk velvet. Mm -hmm. Now this is stabilized with silk organza. Oh, See? look at that. So it's just backed in silk right. organza. So that's the same thing. I'm hooping. So now the, with, the, you said you put that on a sticky, on a no, sticky. No, not this one. This one, these, right? Nope. Or no? No oh, stabilizer. Oh, okay. And none okay. for this because right. the silk organza is the stabilizer. Okay. All right. And you know, you can use silk organza as a stabilizer and other fine things too. But nice. that's for another day. I won't go there yet. <laughs> okay. So I'm going to send you a letter. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> so there's a dogwood. A Look bit. at this. Let's oh, my see. goodness. Here's a little flower. Oh, that. So this, the, now I love this that is color. a tutorial. It's called the Pre Little Flower Tutorial. Rachel will yell out at me if I call that wrong. Anyway, so Pre she Little said you Flower. Got, her daughter is here. She's I did here it to right. correct her. <laughs> <laughs> Generally forget the names of my own designs, but. The so colors of this if you want to so just try pretty. it, you can go to abistage.com, go to Evie's Try It Tutorials. I think it's just called Tutorials. Rachel, call Tutorials, Try It Tutorials. It's Try It Tutorials. And you can just search. So that's the place to start. We have this. Now let me show you this. Cool. Everything. Silk organza. So stay with it. So this is what you start all doing. Buddy. Oh, this is so cute. All right. So we start <laughs> with the puff. So it's a circle fabric and draw it up and put a little fiber fill in it. Stuff it like that. And then we start. We're, we're going to make a whole pile of petals. So you just keep hooping until you get all the petals. They're in four or five different sizes. Let's see, they're backed with silk organza. No stabilizer, just silk velvet on top of silk organza. Now, this is one thing I do want to mention. When we first got our embroidery machines, everybody said in the instruction book that would come with it, this is way, I'm telling my age, oh my goodness, this is way back when, the very first little baby lock of Santa came home with me. And in the instruction book, it said, when you hooped your fabric, make sure it's drum tight. So, buddy, I did it drum tight. <laughs> All directions. And then when I took my embroidery out of the hoop, what happens to drum tight fabric when it relaxes? Goes. Oh. And then there were these ripples and wrinkles and puckers all around my embroidery. And I was like, this is not working. Mm -hmm. So a few years later, that kind of became um, pushed out of those books. And now we know that the only way to really make stabilizer work correctly to make to stabilize the fabric correctly is to adhere it to the project fabric and 99 percent of the cases you can do that so that can be a peel and stick wash away it can be an iron-on uh, fusible it can be an iron-on cutaway whatever it is your project requires that's another entire lesson right in that i'm not going to go there but if you can make your stabilizer 
be attached to the back of your project fabric in an area larger than the hoop before you hoop it, then you won't have ripples and wrinkles and puckers around your embroidery design. Because your yes. fabric is not going through the hoop. Only right. on the No, open. your fabric is still going through oh, the hoop. Oh, it is. Okay. But you can't stretch it. Okay. Because you've applied mm -hmm. a piece of mm -hmm. whatever it is you're going to apply mm -hmm. to the back of it. So you can't stretch it, but it's flat and taut and no wrinkles. Mm -hmm. And that's what you want it to be in your hoop. So here's the deal. Well, I got too interested in what you were saying and yes. I forgot to switch to the overhead. So show <laughs> oh. them that step out again. Okay. And I promise I will turn it there. Well, now. I saw I saw that said camera two had that and I thought, well, okay. Well, we're close. <laughs> okay. All right. We're gonna so, start. Okay, so let's talk about these. So I just wanted to stick that in about hooping mm -hmm. because on these, this fabric, now you notice how it's got a little ripple around it? Yeah. So when I put these two layers of fabric in the hoop, I stretched it a bit. When there's a rule, it's always got to be broken for something, right? <laughs> of course, live dangerously. But are so, you okay with, I mean, they're, they're petals, mm -hmm. for goodness sake. Right. So it doesn't matter if well, they have a little. Well, that's why I stretched it. Because oh, they're petals. And okay. I want them to ripple. You did that on purpose. Right. Okay. And I did it for all my flowers so that all the little, so that they give it a little yeah. bit of dimension. Because if you don't do it, then you don't have dimension. Sure. Yeah, you're going to show them okay. a little. So we start with this. So to make this rose, getting ahead of myself right there made out of silk velvet and silk organza. I start with this, it becomes a puff. See, you draw it up, put some stuffing in it, and then I'm going to build the petals on it slowly. And sometimes the very first petals, I'm beginning with the silk organza side up because then I want to see most velvet. Then when I get oh, to the end, the yes. velvet side is up. So, that is so, so we go smart. from this, and then we have this, see, I'm making the bud. Oh, cute. and then we keep adding petals until look a half blown rose. That'd be pretty wow. just like that, so wouldn't it? Real. I, it's, it's so real. And then amazing. we keep on going, and we've got some more. And so when you add your petals, you're overlapping, and you're putting two little tiny hand stitches right here and here. Oh, I have a video, Evie's videos, on my website. If you go look in, I'm your web website, abizstitch.com. Oh, don't say that fast. A bit of. <laughs> and then um, it will show you how me making it, my hands making this rose, so you can watch it in person. Good. And then you add the little leaf behind it, and you have finished oh my your flower. Goodness, that's sweet. And so, so even just out. like yes. to, to lay them all out there, one, two, yes. three, four, five. Alrighty, we'll do that. Okay, let's see. And so there's just the extra petals in there. Can you see that now? And so that first step is that organza right. circle. Yeah. Right, the organza now circle. that you did by hand. That I did. However, there is a machine embroidery design in there. So if you're smart and you can pick out that little, you can just cut a little, leave a little selvage and mm -hmm. pull it up and don't have to run oh. it by hand. So you can actually pull a thread on the machine embroidery? You can. Wow. Mm -hmm. If you pull the bobbin thread, it works pretty Could good. Could you also teach us how to turn mm -hmm. on our machine? <laughs> <laughs> that might be where we learn the most. There's a button on the side. Yeah. It says on and off. Oh, and there's also a plug you plug yeah, in. That's that would one. be important. Right. <laughs> okay. So wow. all of this to tell you that sometimes you don't need stabilizer, but sometimes you do need stabilizer. All right. Can I clear this off Yes, ma'am. All right, so we'll push that aside. And now let's talk about sticky stabilizers. All right, these are some bookmarks that I just recently made. This is a new set of designs called Bookmark It. And really fun. I've made um, maybe a hundred of them by now oh, wow. because they're so fast. Now these- uh, you, you talked about these in your, in your newsletter. Just, I did. Yeah. Mm -hmm. If you haven't signed up for every newsletter, please go to a bit of stitch.com and so that you can receive her newsletter because lots of great little tips and cute ideas and you'll be inspired and freebies. Oh yeah. Just, freebies. Just the uh, she says, Sally, get on it. You will love your embroidery. <laughs> See? I, there you I go. I know. I know. Uh, right. That's why we bring it heavy. Yeah. <laughs> Trying to get, I work working on that. Well, I am that. kind of inspired because, you know, you I love the blue bird. that little bird. Mm -hmm. All right. Well, let's, this stabilizer is a wash away self-adhesive. So you would put that in the hoop first, and then you peel off the release paper and expose the sticky, and then you stick your fabric down it, and you do the center design first. So you do this little bit first. And I always stick a piece of extra stabilizer under the hoop, just a simple tear away. 
to support anything that's got more stitches than just an outline. Because and then, that, that's really, there are really right. quite a few stitches in that little tiny design. And there's another thread. I need to just oh. pop that off right there, Donna. <laughs> yeah, there you that's go. What, these things are for, right? Yeah. So, and, and the mermaid's pretty awesome. You like the mermaid? Mm -hmm. That was I made that one for Kate, and then I yeah. had to make another one because I needed one for me. Yeah, that's cute. Everybody's that's a mermaid cute. at heart. Mermaid hair don't care. That's me every day. <laughs> <laughs> but um, I know you're going to keep talking, but but I think this is so. That came from where? myself an a outfit to wear to a wedding for oh, you shower did? curtain. All right. Who wears a shower curtain to a wedding? Me. <laughs> well, there are pretty, pretty ones. So this, this is <laughs> cotton organdy on the back. And this came from what? That came from another tablecloth, I think. Yeah, yeah tablecloth. So tablecloths and, you know. So look in unusual mm, places. Un Usually with Rick Guy. Yeah, because and they have headquarters of Organdy right here in this shop, which is real convenient because you could make about 20 bookmarks out of that, maybe mm -hmm. more if you're careful. So that is really, really nice to have. And then my other little bookmarks here, I was using cotton lawn fabric. Well, you know, that's real fine then. Mm -hmm. My favorite fabric of all is cotton lawn. Oh. And you know how expensive Liberty is. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. I don't have much liberty, but I don't throw any scraps away. Mm -hmm. So these bookmarks are perfect to use for it. But yeah. the problem is, is they don't really support embroidery well because it is so very fine. So if you wanted to put a little dense design on it, like this mermaid or like that, then you're mm -hmm. going to need something behind this fabric. And you have the perfect product. And what do I have? I'll show you right here. <laughs> So does it not matter about the scalloped edges because it is on the edge? Like when you're talking about the dense embroidery, okay. it's just what you're actually right. presenting on the lawn itself. It's not the edging that matters. So that no, much. the edging will hold in. But I have this. I backed these fabrics with this German. What do you call it? It is is the German interfacing. It's German a cotton batiste. It's a cotton batiste. It's okay. beautiful. But what I love okay. about it most is it doesn't shrink. Right. So I have not found any other woven fusible stabilizer that doesn't shrink, but this one doesn't. And I've used it on these dresses too. So this dress right here, see all that? That's pretty heavy duty embroidery in there. And this dress and that one up there, all of those I used this underneath my woven fabric. So that means you actually fuse the German interfacing to the back of your woven fabric. Right. Okay. Before I even put and it then, in the So hoop. then it was just use like one piece of fabric right. and then backed it in right. the organ. Now that's been washed since because I had to get my wash away stabilizer out. Did it wrinkle? Oh wow, no. I know. Because it didn't shrink. Wow. Right. <laughs> that looks so, great. And see this? Same thing. Yeah. So this, oh, this is one of my most favorite products. Every time I come here, I have to buy a little bit more. So it is just useful for so many things. You know what? We have it in white, ivory, French, vanilla, black, black and gray. Now, why didn't I know you had it in colors? I don't know. I need to send some home with you. Oh, man. I definitely could use some black the other mm -hmm. day. I was trying to color it with a black <laughs> magic marker. <laughs> That would have been so much easier. That's right. That's right. Shower right. curtains and black magic markers. Yeah, that's right. So that's my favorite. That's one of my favorite yeah. little tricks there. Okay. So where were we? Stabilizer? Stabilizer. Back to stabilizer. Mm -hmm. Okay. And oh, they I forgot to mention this. You also sell fat quarters of silk organza, correct? Correct. Do you sell them in colors or just white? Um, The fat quarters we only have in like white or ivory. White or ivory. Okay. But I mean, we could do fat quarters and colors because or we, you can dye them yourself. Yeah, just get some rich right. dye. Just get a good stainless steel bowl. Don't use your grandmother's porcelain bowl. <laughs> Is it asking me how I know? <laughs> uh -huh. <laughs> and oh, wear rubber gloves. You know, Shelly Small was on here not too long ago. And um, I was dyeing silk. And so she's like, I'm going to try silk. 
I'm going to try that too. So she did it and she was dying all this silk and she her forgot fingers. to put gloves Ooh. on. <laughs> so she was purple up to her elbows for a little while. <laughs> and I thought that was just so cute because she got so excited. She died. Hey, she's right pretty in. cute anyway. Uh, <laughs> she's one of my favorite yeah, people. She's cute. All right. So, so we'll tell, Stabilize. you know what, what, I'm getting distracted again, but okay. tell them what Shelly, <laughs> what Shelly made to go along with the things that we showed. You remember you, the castle you, that you saw? She's made a carriage. And it'll be released Ooh, soon. A wow. princess carriage. And the little um the little charming people that we make that mm -hmm. a bit of stitch has, they fit in the carriage. And the footman fits in the front. Oh my goodness. And I have to make the horse. Yes. Horns. Oh my goodness. The work yeah, that I do. You do. <laughs> <laughs> wow. All right. Stabilizer here. So what's next? So we talk about. Do you want to talk about using the, the oh, baby yeah, interface? Oh, not so a stabilizer. This is a knit fabric, a t-shirt. And I know lots of you do. Sometimes I do use this fabric, this stabilizer as a stabilizer. This is cloud, right? No, this is baby. baby. This is baby. Baby, baby. baby. Mm -hmm. That little stretch to it does. So it works really good for knits. Now you do know that you don't want your fabric to stretch in the hoop. However, sometimes some knit fabrics, not this because this is a good old t-shirt, but some really fine knit fabrics do need a little bit more stabilizing to hold the embroidery designs and keep them from cupping after they've been washed. So mm -hmm. you can put one layer of this on the back of your fine knit fabric, like if you're doing a little baby thing, you know, we mm -hmm. love those little mm -hmm. knit rompers. And do your go ahead and then stabilize right on top of this. So you would be putting this to your fabric and then putting your stabilizer on this and then doing your embroidery remove your stabilizer, peel up, and cut away as much of this as you can. And that's, for this type of knit, I use a sheer cutaway that's fusible. That's what I use for my t-shirt knits. But then when I'm all done, because if you've ever made t-shirts for your grandbabies and put embroidery on it, and they won't wear them because they're itchy, mm -hmm. so this is how you fix it. This stuff is awesome for applying to the back of it. And so I just cut it in the shape. I actually lay it right down here on my design and I get one of those friction pens and then I just trace around my design like this mm -hmm. and then I cut it out and then I stick it to that and I have covered up my mess and makes it soft next to your skin. So you iron so, it on at that point. Yes. Mm -hmm. After the embroidery is done mm -hmm. and whatever excess stabilizer I have on there has been removed and then I've got my design all done. Is this you? Superpower. <laughs> <laughs> so some people are having some technical difficulty. The video is going in and out. So they wanted to hear that product again. So that was the baby interfacing that you were just showing. Okay. Yes. This is called, say it again, Sally. Baby, baby interfacing. Baby interfacing. It's a knit. Mm -hmm. It's a trico and it has a little bit of stretch to it. Right. But and, it's fusible. Uh, it is fusible. Yeah, and that's the important part. Is it? And you can and real with, soft with both the, this one and also the German interfacing. The German interfacing is 100% cotton and it's a batiste. Neither of these will shrink, mm -hmm. and so that's why they're so great. And mm -hmm. um, Abby told me she uses them to go on the whole yoke of a dress, mm -hmm. and I do the same thing. Mm -hmm. I, I use. I, I actually use both of them. I use right. Whichever one happens These to be These are my next very my favorite table. products. And hopefully mm -hmm. Farmhouse Fabrics will never discontinue them because if so, you'll have a mad mob on your hands. You know, we we <laughs> were having a hard time getting the German interfacing in um, because of COVID and, mm -hmm. and supply chain problems. And so um, we, we had a special order flown in not too long ago. <laughs> wow. It was expensive, mm -hmm. but we had a big shipment so that we wouldn't run out anytime soon. Yes. I know. That's it's what like, we like we've to got hear. to have that because <laughs> it is, it's great. And also we have the two inch strips, you know, that mm -hmm. people can go down the back of a, back of a garment, but it, right. yeah, it works great. In fact, the two inch strip might even go right down the back of your, huh. your little, really? 
Yeah. I need to go See, check into that. Is. Look at that. Yeah. yeah. Oh, is it two inches? Yeah. I mean, right down the, the, down the back of this. How about that? I'll, I'll send some of that one. home with you. I'm yeah. going to have to put a lock on my yeah. pocketbook. Okay. Let's see. Stabilizers. I brought this one thing to show you right quick because this is wool. And I have discovered that Farmhouse has a really nice selection of wools. If you're looking for a fast little project to make a baby blanket for winter time, isn't that cool? Yeah, it is cool. So, and this is backed with flannel. I so you have that. wool on top and it's backed with flannel. Now this would require a washaway stabilizer. So your wool must be pre-shrunk first. This is actually a crepe that I felted. Wow. So that if you buy 100% wool crepe and make sure that it's not worsted, then you can felt it in your machine, your washing machine. Just high heat, a little bit of soap, the longest agitation as possible. The lint oh prep. yeah yeah <laughs> and you can use that for inside your pin cushions oh really <laughs> yeah. i did not know that because all that wool comes up there and you've been giving it your... to the squirrels oh well the squirrels <laughs> like it too yeah i thought that you hand wrote that i didn't that's much turn this around where they can look at this oh it's so delicate I, doesn't it look handwritten? Mm -hmm. A day spent with you is my favorite day. So today is my new favorite day. I know, isn't that sweet? Yeah, sweet. All it I love that. These, these just became um, copyright free. You know that. Oh, did they? Yeah. Wow. So I've been waiting. I had already done these for a friend, but I couldn't sell uh -huh, them. So uh -huh. when they came out, I was so like, So you oh, have these available can. on your website I for do. sale. Oh, my I goodness, do. people. So this is a this. wash away stabilizer, though. You uh -huh. need wash away stabilizer for that. Okay, now let's talk about an iron-on stabilizer. Here's the project that I'm working on right now. All right. Off of your table. Right off my cutting table. Oh, my goodness. Right off my machine. If you will follow my stories at all on Instagram, you will see this in the making a couple nights ago. Who needs sleep, right? These are the sweetest oh. faces, kittens <laughs> ever. So this is going to be a little pinafore for my youngest granddaughter with little kitties because she, she loves her little animal. She's always walking around with somebody tucked under her arm which is just darling <laughs> anyway so this stabilizer okay so these designs are really light this is all just um what would you call it bean stitch looking designs so bean stitch designs they are le less stitch dense than a fill stitch design and just to show you okay this is a fill stitch design and all of these back here that's a fill stitch design this is also would be considered fill stitch, even though it doesn't have fill in it because it's a satin stitch. So it's dense. So there's a lot of, there's a lot of thread in that. So your fabric needs support of stabilizer to help support the threads. And the stabilizer that is trapped between your bobbin thread and your fabric is going to remain permanently in there, which basically is okay. Because if you're using a paper one, eventually washing, that will work its, its way out and disappear, it'll disintegrate. But a uh, lots of times for bean stitch, I will just simply use a wash away stabilizer. However, I have a lot of little candle wick stitching in that. They're like um, French knots almost. And so those are a little denser than my normal bean stitch designs. So for this one, I used a stabilizer that was my old go to, and I still go back to it because it's light. It comes off as easy as it goes on. And it is this one layer is all that I needed to do this. Now, do you see any wrinkles in here? That's because I fused a piece of this sulky totally stable to the entire piece of my fabric. And this is a border design. And I know some of you have asked about continuous borders and how to do them. So I'm going to walk you through that just real quickly and briefly and tell you how I do it. But you'll notice that there's no wrinkles. And that was a very light stabilizer, but that's because we have lightly digitized designs and our stabilizer is holding our fabric perfectly taut, perfectly smooth, no wrinkles in the hoop. So your stabilizer has to cover an area larger than the hoop in order for that to work. And it has to be adhered good to the back of your fabric. Now don't make it permanent. I know somebody actually managed to iron totally stable onto a piece of silk dupioni and then couldn't get it off, but she had used a heat press on it. Probably not a good idea. Yeah. 
Okay, so so when you um, so when you're working with that, it works really well. It works really nice. So and look at the back. So yes, tearing away all that stabilizer wasn't that much fun, and I left the little pieces here and there, but they'll wash away. So this little garment right here is considered finished until I sew it into a pattern. So I'm done with that. And this is a continuous border. Does that look complicated to you? Who is afraid of making a continuous border? Wave your hand. <laughs> I want everybody in here is waving your hand. <laughs> Are you waving your hand? Okay, continuous borders, there's nothing to be afraid of. Let me show you another project I just took off my table. I love these sneak peeks. This I is know. so fun. All right, this oh, is another one. This. So here we go. I'm working on a cutwork border. Now this is actually finished. I'm going to make a tea towel. So I'm going to go over here and cut that up and then hem both sides and I'm done. And there's my sticky stabilizer right there. But if you wanted to make another one, turn this way. If you wanted to make another one right down here, this is what you would do. So you Look need how cute those cats are. Okay. If you have a machine that has a camera, well, I don't need to tell you how to do this because you've already figured out that you can take a picture of what's in your hoop and you can line your design up exactly as it needs to be. So that's awesome. If you don't have a machine that has a camera, no worries, you can still do it because that's the way we did it before we had cameras, right? So this is what you would need to do. You need this type of, of wash away stabilizer. Where did I throw my snips? Oh, here they are. Okay. Now what you do is you score the paper. Just like this. Don't press so hard that it cuts the stabilizer. Just press enough so that you can get this paper here up and peel it up. Well, looks like I didn't score hard enough. <laughs> there go. This is kind of like um, trying to get duct tape off of them. All right. So there we have. So I've exposed my sticky stabilizer. And I'm going to line up this. I'm going to turn this so you can see it. Can you see the lines? You might not can. On my cutting mat at home, I have a, a green mat with yellow lines. And I have a white mat with black lines. And I can see through this stabilizer and see the lines. And what I do is I line up my hoop marks, one there and one there. So now I have them see how they're lined up with that straight line right there. Okay, so now I would... Don't have any scotch tape laying around here? Um, yeah, there you should do. be. Uh, yeah, all right. right here. Sally's going to give you some scotch tape because what I would want to do is put this template in place. Now, if your machine has a camera, you don't have to use a template because you're, you can actually see what the design looks like on it. Wow. That's what I call it. That's a real sturdy <laughs> tape. Wow. I need one of these. Rachel, can we have one of these? Mm -hmm. Okay, so see, now I've, I've put that right where I want it to be. I want that border to line up right like that. Now you notice on a printed template, oh, do you know what a printed template is? Did you know that you can get them for your embroidery designs? Yep, you can. If your embroidery designs don't come with printed templates, you can always ask the designer if they'll provide them for you. And if they can't do that, then you may have software already at piece that I'm going to stitch and then label and I know that this is how it's going to look and then I start from there okay so let's go back here I'm going to line up my lines again so this is lined up that lines up with that straight line and then I'm getting my flowers in my hoop okay and then I'm going to line up with another line under there these little things there. So oh, I'm going to have to go further up in the hoop so I can get in there. Okay. So I'm making everything straight as I can. Okay. And then tap this down good. See? Sticks. It's holding in place. 
Now, before I take this template off, I'll go to the machine and I'll put my hoop in the machine and then I'll use the design perimeter tool. You'll, I haven't yet met an embroidery machine that doesn't have one of those. It will actually trace around the perimeter of your design where the design area sits. And it will also allow you to go to the north, south, west, and east points and to the center. And some of them will also go to all four corners. So when you have that little printed template, if you know, if you can't see it on your screen, that's okay because if you can see it here, the needle dropping into those points, you'll know that you are correctly aligned. So, all right, so we go to the machine and I allow, find my little design perimeter tool and then I go and I check the center first. So I'll check the center by put, pressing the needle down button. And so the needle drops down. Hey, and do that without putting it. So drop the needle down and then raise it back up. Look at your hole. Is it right where it needs to be? If it's not, now you go over there and you move your design. Oh, and I should tell you this too. She's an embroidery newbie. And this is something that I learned very early on and was so thankful for. Somebody else had to tell me, Evie, if you're stitching a design that has to be moved around in the hoop, you're going to need a hoop that's a little bigger than the design. So this four by four design <laughs> fits in a four by four hoop, but as you see, I'm using a five by seven hoop. And then that way I can move my design around and get it where it needs to be. Boy, was that an eye open experience. It's like, why didn't I think of that? Oh my goodness. So it makes it so much easier to be able to move your design. Now I've checked my center and if the center is where it needs to be, I'll check my north, south, east, and west points. And if that if my needle falls on that line right where it should be, if it's a if it's a you can't really see it. Well, we have those no seam bugs down here. Yeah. yeah. Okay. If it's a no seam <laughs> off any of those lines, you're probably okay. But then then you check all of those. Now with this, because it is a cut work border, when you're working on a cut work border, normally the design starts with an outline that you cut against. And that will always start at the top, usually, unless you've turned it wrong ways up and it'll be started at the bottom. But you want it to start where your previous design has stopped. So I'll go right here and I'll press go button on my machine and I quick press stop because now the machine will travel to the place where that first stitch will go. I press the needle down button and look at my look at my needle. Is it right there where it needs to be? Where did those snips go again? Here they are. Is it right there? If it's right there, then I'm ready to go. All right. And so I take this off and I sew my first outline stitch. And then on a cutwork border, you know, after you do the, the cutting line, you trim it away. And notice here how I cut it straight up to that edge. I didn't angle it there. So I've got plenty of fabric to do that other piece on. So when you're doing cut work, make sure you leave yourself fabric to keep adding borders if you need it. And that's how easy it is to make a continuous border, a cut work border, even if you have a machine that doesn't show you the design on the screen or you don't have a camera. Now look up here. We've got some Let's cut work pull, borders. Pull, maybe pull them down pull so they can, can, can you reach it? Eh. <laughs> I took my shoes off so I wouldn't be quite as colored and Sally as I was. <laughs> <laughs> I have my book. I can stand. On. You stand on a book? Yeah, right here. Oh my goodness! Because, I was wondering why that was on the floor. Yeah, because <laughs> Kristen is so much taller than I am. Well, then now why weren't you on it the whole time? You look so much better like, like this height. I can ah. see you in your eyes. <laughs> I don't feel like I'm gawking over you like a big old crow. <laughs> All right. Now I know how I'm appeared. Oh, oh my God, I'm going to grow. <laughs> well, you know how they sit up in the tree and look at you like that. <laughs> okay, now this is cut work. And this I is done that. with all those steps that I just told you. So, wow. and when I made this, I did not have a machine that had a camera. So that, that I just told you, that works. So this is wow. one of them. And let's see if I can get this one down. So that's also a continuous border. Yes, mm -hmm. and this is also a continuous border here. Now this design actually has a corner in it. Well, this one didn't, so I just kind oh, of yeah, fudged. Just, okay. Mm -hmm. And all of that happens after the on button. 
Yes. That's when this all takes place. You turn the machine on, Sally. Plug it in, right? <laughs> oh. I also have cut working board. Now, let's see if I can remember the name of this design without Rachel yelling at me. Um, sea Breezy. I got it. These are, this is Sea Breezy. That's pretty. And those are uh, beautiful. Medallion cut work. <laughs> Medallion cut, cut work. Oh my, I should know those things. So pretty. This is on a damask. It is. Man, I love that. And then we also have this baby dress over here. I'm just going to Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. Let's see if I can get it off. We can just pull the whole. There we go. This was case. This is gorgeous. gorgeous. So th this has a wash away. That is uh, sticky. Mm -hmm. The sticky wash away. Right. So mm -hmm. once you're done, you're done. you just wash it away. And Which and brings me to it. a really good point. You pre shrink your project fabric. Right. 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 Because unlike. Or nice German interfacing, land shrinks. Yeah. And then that way it will. I think you're, you're, good. you're buying. Hands are so pretty. Thank they you. look so nice. Wow. No, but you know, I used to say for a living. Did okay. Mm -hmm. That's fine. way back in the day. Fabric from oh man France. Oh nice. Oh man, I, yeah, it was so yeah. scary though because sometimes mm -hmm. I would be I would be standing there at the table with this fabric that I knew was mm -hmm. like three hundred dollars a yard mm -hmm. and my scissors, and I'd have to go in the house and have a cup of tea and come back out. Sometimes I'd be going in the house several times before yeah. I get enough nerve to cut it. That's right. But I would go to their store and their oh. clients would come in and I would sketch out their whatever they had in their head sometimes that was really quite something to get out because people generally don't really know what they want they just know how they want to look mm -hmm. so you have to figure it out so I they might not it. look that great when they get it on because <laughs> and then they you have look to steer great them to very with. gently away from <laughs> something that's, that's right right so wow. you okay. start with a pencil and paper for your yes um I used design? to. I used to everything I draw first but now I draw directly on the screen because it's hard for me to hold a pencil anymore and draw draw and fingers don't work like they mm -hmm, used to so mm -hmm. but this finger works <laughs> so <laughs> I, I click things in place that is this is just beautiful. beautiful and this the finishing is so Thank pretty you. my goodness well it's pretty. you know can't be done right while you're doing it huh? <laughs> <laughs> that's, that's right. not true because actually i will slap something together in a hurry if i want it finished and done so me too. Uh -huh. I know how to do that. So this is the cut work board. So this too. is what happens when you have grandkids. I know. You do Isn't really that... frou frou stuff that you're like, I can't believe I'm sewing on this. I know. I do that all the time. <laughs> this is adorable. Isn't that fun? Look if, at that. If I hadn't if I had bobinet and blue, which you have, right? I've been so in love with that bobinet. I love how you did this. And then it makes oh. a little ruffle on it. Now these designs, this is called this um skull cut cute? work borders. What is it? She didn't oh, even give you a chance on that one. She I knew know. It was like, <laughs> She's like, ah, oh, mama's not got that one. Okay, this one actually has a curved border in it. See hey, those look, three pieces? Look. They curve. Oh, I have cheat sheets. Yeah. Wow. Look at there. Oh, yeah. <laughs> didn't even know it. All right, let's see. I was going to show, show you one more thing over here. This one. Let me show you this. this. Is, I love these seashells on here. Okay, this is oh, a border cute. too. See, cute. That's a continuous border. Wow. And even if you don't have a really big hoop, like for instance, if you have only a four by four hoop, that's a four by four design. So you could just keep going and do that and make a continuous border. I think you need to buy a bigger hoop. Yes. Because wouldn't that be it's a, pain? a lot easier? No. Well, I mean, my pain first have machine just, just had four by four. Oh, and you couldn't it wouldn't even take a bigger one. Mm -mm. All right. I know. I, I, did want the, I want the biggest one I can get, so I don't have to change it <laughs> yeah. out. I know. And look, bobbin. There's your bobbinette. I know. I'm excited about so, that. I like so, it. Just yeah. even just one layer underneath That's baby just dresses. Like a, just a lining. It just keeps it. See. That's it just so keeps cute. it from being flimsy feeling. So this is um, this is boil. I think. What do you think? 
I do think so. It's pretty lightweight. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. And these are my vintage vines designs. It looks like a Swiss Benice trim. Thank I you. Mean, that's so oh, it beautiful. does. That's Doesn't exactly it? what it looks like. Yeah. Well, that's one of the things that I love about machine embroidery is that you can make it look like it's heirloom mm -hmm. and hand embroidery mm -hmm. and stuff. Mm -hmm. Wow. Look at back here. This is cute. That so, is so, cute. so tell me on, on this kind of embroidery. Mm -hmm. Where do they look on your website to find this? What's, oh, maybe we can, Vintage Vines. Yes. It's called Vintage Vines. <laughs> you probably already said that. But I also have I, Vintage Vines in color. See? Oh, well, wow. Those let's, are there. Pull, let's pull that out. Well, good luck getting that one off because well, I, I struggled we'll with this. We'll do it this way. <laughs> that's so sweet. Mm -hmm. Okay, so that, is that the same as this? Pull yes, it only it's in down. color. Down. Okay. It's, it's in color. There so there's go. color breaks. That. I actually had to re-digitize them because I wanted this to digitize from one end to the other with no thread breaks. So I digitize one stitch at a time for the most part so that I can get make that happen. So from one end to the other, that will sew. So when I did the thread breaks, then it's not intelligent if you just cut it up and put the colors in there. So I had to re-digitize most all of the bind to do that. All right, they want to know what so kind of does. thread you use for your embroidery. <laughs> whatever was in my box <laughs> no actually i like different threads and this one right here i really hate to tell you this but it's a truth so i'm gonna have to do it so this is a maxi lock <laughs> serger thread oh you're kidding yeah i'm not kidding i actually like maxi lock on my um embroidery machines because it's very sturdy you know if you've got a serger and you've used it you know how fast those machines mm -hmm. sew and you don't want broken serger threads because then you have it's to light weight too, right right and it's mm -hmm. lightweight so it does really well however our fill works beautifully too this is um that is a polyester it might be rayon some of them may be polyester and some may be rayon but these are 40 weight threads that this serger thread is maybe a 40 weight it might be shy more toward 50 so 40 weights a little this heavier is 40. Mm -hmm. than i would have expected right 40 weight is standard for machine embroidery is no a 40 weight. Mm -hmm. Okay. That's what we use. And you can use regular sewing thread. Madeira's Aerofill, A-R-E-O-F-I-L, works good. Um, the Met Metler, you have Metler, don't you? I do. So you can use that. But I don't think I have a 40 weight. I think I, we have um, silk so finish good. cotton. And was, is, I wouldn't recommend silk finish cotton. Okay. I would is probably it too, break, it would break it. too yeah. much. But the um the polyester one you could use. That one's a 60 weight, I think. 60 weight. Well, the as long as you're doing fine designs, which some of mine are, like mm -hmm. the bean stitch nut, mm -hmm. they would be fine. Yeah, now that's that would good these outline stitches of the mm -hmm. cats. Yeah, those of course, are your friend Shelly Smola is a cat lover. I know. <laughs> so does well, that you influence have a cat you? in your sewing room, too? I, we oh, do. We, we have a cat. She adopted we, us. We have five <laughs> kittens that are ready for new homes. Uh, no. You you can no. take you want to take no. home with you right now. <laughs> no. <laughs> and there better not be one in my car when I go out. You there. Provide a box and a and a little dish of cat no. food. <laughs> let's see anything else up there you want to know about. Yeah, let's talk about talk about her. Yeah, this is so cute. That's and there's a baby one to go with it. I can't reach that though, Kristen. No. You'll have to come get it. Might have to do but it with it. We usually this need is a long handled a, reacher out here. This is the um Ooh, I got a cheat sheet mermaid fantasy and i like this fabric now this fabric here is very very sheer i mm -hmm. fell in love with it because it's got this little shine to it i actually um the hem in it there i put a pretty sturdy lining for this one let's see you can see your hand right yeah. there so sure. i was afraid that it wouldn't support the embroidery because that is pretty stitch intense all those signs so that's the german fusible interfacing that's behind the whole bodice so i just Used interfacing to that entire bodice front and one piece of fabric, and then I did it. And do you know when you're doing good. a placement of design like this in a pattern? And I'm thinking that this is I'm trying to remember the pattern that this is. Um, I think it might be Little Lizard King, one of their sundresses. Can't remember. I don't know. Anyway, there are several pattern makers that I absolutely mm -hmm. love. Yeah. But so. If you're do if you're doing a, a set place, I can't talk. Alrighty, 
So if you're trying to put embroidery design on a certain area in a garment, the easiest thing to do is to cut a big piece of fabric that is a little bigger than the pattern piece, mm -hmm. do your embroidery design, and then cut it out. Mm -hmm. Very mm -hmm. much easier mm -hmm. than doing a little one. Right. And you know what else we have, which I just recently did? What? And the reason why I did is because of this. So... You know, when you have buttonholes really close to the edge in a little tiny place, mm -hmm. how annoying it is to use your buttonhole foot. Mm -hmm. And I love automatic buttonholes on my machine because it's so easy, right? You just put it in there. And Do you do automatic buttonholes? Mm -hmm. What? Sally, what do you do? I use my buttonhole foot and just mark them and make them. And zigzag it. No, I mean, I use a, I use my buttonhole thing on my machine, but okay. I don't use that great big long thing that gets in my way. I and don't and like why do thing. you not use it? Because, because it, gets, it, it messes up when you're, you only have a little bit of, I don't like it. That, that, I that use right my, there. Is it number three right. foot or number five? I mean, I can't remember. Right. Which it's ones. okay. Those, those, those feet work awesome when you've got a flat yeah, plan to go and you can. You were making an adult dress and you were going all the way down the front of something, but doing this kind of thing. Uh huh. They get in the way, they get caught up well, on the seam. Well, let me blow your mind. What are you going to tell me? Oh, um, I made buttonholes in the hoop. I hear people talking about that. Uh huh. Mm -hmm. That's also after it the power saved <laughs> my life. It really did because you can put a buttonhole exactly where you need it to go, no matter how contrary or awkward or small or just hard to reach place that it is. And this little thing, you never worry about your, your foot catching on the thing, and then you end up with a buttonhole that's mm -hmm. stunted because it's grabbed as it goes. Mm -hmm. So I just do them in the hoop. So easy. And I digitized buttonholes to look just like a buttonhole, you know, with the bar tack at the top mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. and the underlay underneath. They're beautiful. So do you call that easy? I mean, I know the buttonhole so easy. is easy, but the, is that whole process an easy it's process? It's so easy. Yeah. See, to me, I think I could do it quicker on the machine. On no, my sewing you couldn't. machine. I guarantee you could. Well, <laughs> we need to, ooh, we could have a <laughs> sew-off. <laughs> <laughs> That's what we need. But we need look, look, this is what I do. Okay. I've got my stabilizer. I don't even use a sticky stabilizer. Sometimes I just use a sheer cutaway stabilizer. I stick it in my hoop. I take my dress and I lay it down on top of the hoop like this. And I say, okay, I need a buttonhole right there. And I just plop that right there on top of my stabilizer, not even stuck to it. I just, sometimes I put a pin here and here. Sometimes I put a piece of tape there. And then I move my design on my screen until my needle will drop right dead center in the place where my buttonhole goes. And then when my button, when I start embroidering my button I, hole, I might actually um, just press go and then press stop. Oh, it's good to go and you don't have to worry about it. And then it just sews it right like that. So then, if I have more places, I might even double my fabric up. So another one there. Yeah. Hmm. This has been worn a little bit. And, so you and put keep in going. the size of the needle or the size of the button that you're mm -hmm. using. It comes uh, the buttonhole set that we have. But uh, I don't remember what it's called. Mm -hmm. Um, buttonholes. buttonholes. I, it's literally called buttonholes. Just literally called buttonholes. <laughs> How <laughs> novel! <laughs> How novel is that? Okay. So uh, it comes from real tiny, half inch, I think, all the way up to an inch. I think we have. They want to see a close up of the buttonholes and the white bodice. And the white bodice. Up to one and a half. Okay, let's see. Let me find you a spot here. H.M. Harris on Instagram said, Evie's embroidery machine buttonholes are wonderful. Oh, good. Somebody Yay. else loves them. I didn't, this little dress has been worn and washed many times. So it's that down just a little bit. This so way, yeah. see if I've got any more you buttonholes in here, but I don't think I do. No, those are done the other way. All righty. And the white bodice. What white bodice is that? I'm not sure. The maybe are they talking about that dress? This I think so. Maybe they do go up to one and a half. Oh wow! Buttonholes up to one and a half inches. This is mermaid fantasy. So we'll talk about that in a minute. <laughs> That's the same as on that big dress. 
Same designs, different oh, design set. Cute. Because you know, Sally, when you buy embroidery machine designs, you generally get more than one in a pack. <laughs> <laughs> she's going to be educated about machine embroidery. And you watch the next Gab and Gus. She's going to come out of here and be slapping out these things she's been embroidering all over the place. And you're going to go, wow, Sally, you learned a lot. Right? Catherine already right. said, next make Sally. I'm I see that. That's so Sally. So you need to do a bookmark. Uh, you could do that. We'll, yeah. We'll show her how to turn the machine on before yeah. I leave. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Okay. You going to tell them? Do they, do they need to see it or did they are you done? Oh, you saw it. Okay. So okay. you're done. Now, do you want to see this? Is this the white bodice? Is that what? Does anybody have any questions? Fire away. Try to answer before need. we leave. No, that's the one. Sure. This one we haven't looked at. That's this is this so one has buttonholes. But that was before I had my oh, buttonholes. You didn't, in oh, okay. The, but okay. they're they're done the same way, basically. This is cute. This has got inserts on it. White bodice on big white dress close up. White bodice on big white dress with like this one. Uh, oh, that's the same yeah. set as the little yeah, one that we okay. showed. She okay. wants to see that one. Okay. Okay. <laughs> we can do some close up. And that pattern is Eden by Little Lizard Pink. Like Garden of Eden? Yes. Okay. E D E N. E D E N. Good job. Which way? Wrong side up? To you. Yep. I gotta get used to this newfangled way of laying things out. Y'all scoot it over this way a little bit. Yep. So this is Mermaid Fantasy. And I used some variegated thread in this. I love variegated thread. That's because you get all the colors. So right. yeah, these fishes are variegated and her hair. That hair. And then some of it I just used to use it and, on, on here. Yep, I used it on those too. Oh, look at your little seahorse. That's so cute. Oh, it kind of fades into the fabric a little bit. Oh, I love it though. Sometimes All I just little like for it to be dainty. Yeah, that's sweet. Oh my really, goodness! Oh, oh look, that's you variegated. Some, see those fish? They're variegated too. They made are, stripes. Yeah, they're so cute. <laughs> I love sulkies. Oh. <laughs> sulkies variegated. They're rayon thread mm -hmm. in the fat spool. Work best on my machines. And the variation in it is just long enough for my little flowers to have different colors. Aww. And all of the, um, let's see, and this one here, I used variegated, and this is all sulky too. All right, I'm going to layer it down here so you can yeah. see. So you see those, the roses there? That's the very, one of those um, rose red variegated threads by Sulky. And the yellow is the same thing. So see how all those mm -hmm. little berries have mm -hmm. different colors? Their color length is not as not as short as some. It has a, a, a longer color change length. Oh, and you see that right there? That's baby yeah. lock Sashika flip stitching. Cool, huh? It is cool. Mm -hmm. Nobody would know that. Looks like decay. Mm -hmm. uh, mm -hmm. I love that little detail. That's cute. Now what about what about this little this little girl here? I think she'll come off. I think so too. This one. This is fun. This is window fill. I remember these designs. Okay, and this is also a border too. That's why I brought it because see, it's not quite connecting. And I just mirror image the design as I went. So it's the same design, but the border goes all the way around. And I did it exactly as I told you how in lining the borders mm -hmm. up. These are these are cute little guys. And those, um, so they're windows. What's going on here? Oh, they, okay. So, so what the do you fabric, do? This fabric was cut away. Oh, so that's cut right. away. Mm -hmm. All right. So you can, they can kind of see, kinda see a little bit, maybe this way, like on <laughs> um, Instagram. And yeah, that that's cute. So this what is that this fabric? fabric? That's, kinda, that's organdy behind it. But you didn't. That's not stitched. Yes. All the, those little um, all those little designs are stitched on yep, right on the organdy. Oh, you're kidding! Mm -hmm. So what you do is you use your wash away <laughs> stabilizer, and then wow. you lay your project fabric down on top, and then you put your organdy fabric behind the hoop like that, and then you'll stitch that line, the cutting line, and you'll cut away this fabric. And now you've exposed the sticky, but that's okay because now I want to put another piece of white mm -hmm. fabric on top so that I can do the cat. 
the cat's like a little but, apple. But cake. you've actually this this is all done on your machine. Yes. All these little diamonds. Yes. Oh my goodness. Yeah. See what embroidery you do? <laughs> I'm impressed. You would really like it. <laughs> and this looks like a tiny little trim. It's like you know, candle wet. Little, mm -hmm. That's so cute. Mm -hmm. Like French knots. And I love the bird. You know, I love birds. Mm -hmm. That's really cute. Oh my and goodness. Bunnies. And let's see. We got any more in that? Look at all those buttons. See, I could have done those. That's But cute. I didn't in the hoop. Oh man. I know you. We did. We did talk about it earlier, but we need to talk about talk your, about Dolly. Uh huh. Mm -hmm. All right. Let me pull her down here. Since it's summer. <laughs> Hello, everybody. <laughs> My name is Blueberry. <laughs> and <to> Rachel. <laughs> and Rachel over there is going, Mom. Okay. This is one of my favorite projects. In fact, this started out my um my oldest granddaughter. She, one day when I was at her house, she said, Grandma, can we make a doll? And I said, Sure. Have you ever made a sock doll? Have you ever made a sock doll? Mm -hmm. Everybody that my age or older or younger or little has made a sock doll once in their life. So I said, okay, let's go find a sock doll. Well, her socks to make a doll and her mama didn't have very pretty socks, but we made a doll anyway, and we didn't have stuffing, but we had beans. So it ended up being a doll with it. So that got me started to thinking. So I got some athletic white socks and I dyed them the colors that I wanted them to be. And we actually have kits for sock doll body kits. So you can get the hair and the body and the stabilizers that you need to make that little this little doll with but it's also a free project so you've got socks that you want to use and yarn that you want to use you can go read the baby lock um it just, it's just summer sock doll okay <laughs> it's just a sock doll blog post it was um a project i did with baby lock for one of their summer schools that they had so it's posted up on my website and the there are on the blog and it will also tell you how to make the little dress. Now, I do have patterns that you download for to make the panties and also to make a little boy shirt and pants. If you want to make a boy sock doll, which we've made several of those, we had to make a witch and wizard this past Halloween. That was kind of fun. Mm -hmm. And now I understand I'm supposed to be making a fairy and fairy princess. And what else was, Oh, a mermaid so we're going to figure out how to make a mermaid tail for the sock dolls that she can slip on and off and be a little mermaid which probably yeah, means i'm going to be cute. finding shells and drilling holes oh, in them yeah, so yeah, I, I think so that sounds fun <laughs> that's that's so cute yeah. these are really fun to make and addictive i can't see yeah to that's stop so cute them. but there you go you dye in your dye in your um socks and that's a good idea though because you're not going to find the color like no this. how are you going to find that i know that's so sweet should we talk about your um about your bag do you want to i think it's pretty. are we gonna run out of time here <laughs> well we got a little bit of a late start okay i'm not sure can you get it down if i do this i'm not watching someone's gonna come down <laughs> on me here in a minute i, I don't that's i might work. need somebody taller <laughs> i don't have a tall enough book to do it there you go thank you we do have long handled reachers up in the shop Isn't because nice? i can't reach anything but this is applique. This is cute. These are cute right here. Buttons. I love that. Have you yes. ever have you ever used a, um, a roller foot? No. For vinyl? This is the first time I ever used it for that. And I was right. six. Mm -hmm. So it's That's even nice. better than a Teflon foot because it just rolls along like that while you're stitching. So That's how I made buttons. the handles. I know the fun. buttons are adorable. And this is um, quilted on the Sashiko machine. Sashiko is the same machine mm -hmm. does. That one stitch, but I do a lot yeah. of fancy. It's mermaid, just single mermaid design. Apple. Mermaid apple, okay. And then the under the sea is the name of the animals and they come in two sizes I was looking at 
it's a manswear fabric. Oh, wow. I love and that's that. that glitter vinyl that Pete set. Right. Right. I just peel the paper wow. off of it, the plastic carrier paper, and then I just use it as applique fabric. That's so great. That's fun. Oh, my goodness. So, so now you're going to go in forty? No, no. I don't think so. <laughs> <laughs> I'm going to admire everything that you do, though. I'm gonna have to come back, aren't I? I'm yeah, have to you come are back definitely with my machine gonna, gonna and sit down back. with her yep, and yep. get this going. Oh my goodness, it's so much fun when you come. Thanks for having me, man. It's, <laughs> it's great. I wonder if anybody, if anybody, have any questions? I know we're we're they just commenting. I love it. I want one. Oh, it's beautiful. Do you want to throw that coupon code out? Oh, oh, there you go. Right, we do have a coupon code still Farm ongoing. House. Farmhouse. Farmhouse. So. Just plain farmhouse. Okay, so if you go to a stitch.com and you want to go shopping, and when you get ready to check out, if you put farmhouse in the code box, that will get you five dollars off your purchase of any ten dollar purchase. So that's like half price. So if you have already used the coupon before, because I was here a while ago, it's been reset so you can use it again. So you're free to go do that. You need to be logged in, right? right. Yeah, you need to be you go ahead and, and sign in and go through your account and check out and apply that code at checkout and then we'll yeah. take it off for you. So, all right. Well, thank you, Evie, so, so You're much. Welcome. Now we're going to go shopping. <laughs> yes. Yeah. For a machine? No, no. I was going to help you cut your fabric. <laughs> okay. Right. I have oh, a stack. <laughs> it's just, I, I love it when you come. It's just so thank awesome. You. I yeah. have a good time. Yeah, me too. Thanks for me listening, y'all. Yeah, thank you. And I'm so sorry we kind of started rough, but, um, you know, I'm going to blame it on the storm. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> See ya.